Welcome back. In this section today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at separating our variables out, and we're going to be solving some differential equations, um, finding some constant values. In our next video, we'll combine that with, sorry about that, we'll combine that with uh, some slope fields and finding these constants and so like that. But in this section, we're going to be taking a look at a lot of word problems. And so what ends up happening in these problems is that if you have a um, if you have a relationship where our initial value is y sub zero, y sub zero and it's growing exponentially um, or it's decaying exponentially, one of the two. And we can look at the rate of change as dy over dt, where t is our time, equals cy. If we were to separate our variables and put y over here, let me kind of prove this to you. If we go dy over y equals c dt, what ends up happening is um, we can take the ln, or, you know, when we, we integrate both sides we can develop this relationship where I end up with the ln of y equals um, ct plus um, a constant value. Um, I don't want to stay away from c, so let's, uh, well, that's fine. Um, and, well, let's use k. That will be good. And then if I unravel the log, it's y equals e to the ct plus k which is um, e to the k times e to the ct. And in our, our problems with this e to the k is, this is y sub 0, which is our initial value, times e to the ct. So when we look at exponential growth or things moving exponentially, um, whether it's exponential growth, exponential decay, um, we're going to be um, solving our problems this way. Our first couple of examples I have for you here today is some situations where we're just separating our variables, and I'll expand on this in my next video as well, but whenever you're trying to integrate and solve equations for, you know, with an initial condition like f sub 0 equals 1 half, this is where we're going to be finding our constant value, so we're, t we're talking about solving a differential equation. In this, in this particular example, we have to separate our variables because this is e to the 2y and then this is 3x squared. I can't integrate e to the 2y with 3x squared, so what I have to do is I cross multiply it. So when I cross multiply this, I'm going to get e to the 2y dy equals 3x squared dx. Now I have all the y's on the left and all the x's on the right, and I can integrate this. So integrate e to the 2y dy equals 3x squared dx. I'm going to integrate that, sorry. Here, u has to be 2y, and so when I rewrite it, um, I get 1 half, so it's going to be, um, it's going to be 1 half times the integral of e to the u du, and this one the, the is just power rule, so it's 3 times the integral of x squared dx. This integral is going to be 1 half times e, and I'm going to put the 2y back in. And that equals is 3x cubed divided by 3, so it's just x cubed plus c. And we're just we're just going to add one c value. We just add one one c value. Um, once once we have this, I think it's easiest at this point to find my constant value by plugging in my initial condition right here. So I always do that. So when I plug in my initial condition, I put in zero for here, and I'm going to put in one half for y. So I get one half e to the first power. Um, equals c. So 1 half e to the first power equals c. So I'm going to put this as, I'm going to write it as x cubed plus 1 half e. And now I need to solve this for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply through the equation by 2. So e to the 2y equals uh, 2x cubed plus e. And then rewrite rewrite my um, exponential as a log. So 2y equals the ln of um, the absolute value of 2x cubed plus e. And then um, I multiply both sides by 1 half. So 1 half ln of the absolute value of 2x cubed plus e. We're going to be doing this uh, more when we get into our slope fields in our next video. Uh, but just so you get the idea that I've got to separate these variables. So I've got to group the y's together with the dy, the x's together with the dx's, and then I can integrate. 
Um, uh, next example, same idea. Let me just kind of run through this one really quickly. It's dy over y squared equals 6 um, minus 2x. That should be dx, sorry, times dx. Integrate both sides. When I integrate this side, it's just going to be negative 1 over y. Integrate this side, it's power rule, so it's 6x minus x squared plus c. Um, plug in 3 and then 1 fourth, so I'm going to get negative uh, 4 over here equals 18 minus 9 plus c. So I get my c value to be 3, no, hold on, what did I do wrong here? Oh, sorry, yeah, so this, this part right here is um, going to be 9, subtract it over, I get negative 13 equals c. So I'm going to put that right here, so I get negative 1 over y equals uh, 6x minus x squared minus 13. Uh, change all the signs because of the negative, so, and then flip it over. So y equals negative 1 over 6x minus x squared minus 13. So again, like I said, we'll be doing some more separation of variable stuff in, in, uh, with our slope fields in our next video. Now, what this can lead to is then um, doing some exponential growth or an exponential decay problems. And we give our initial conditions, and this is going to be more where the homework is focused on over the next, uh, in this unit right here, or in this particular section. What happens is that we have our bacteria growing from 600 to 1,800 in two hours, and we want to go back to that original condition that the number of bacteria or the number present at any given time is the initial number times e to the ct, where I have to find that constant of variation. That c value is called a constant of variation. So in this particular case, I'm going to do a, I'm going to 1,800 bacteria from 600 bacteria uh, times e to the 2c. If you divide it, you get 3 equals e to the 2c. And then I always solve for e to the c. You're going to see me do this over and over again. So e to the c equals the square root of 3, or 3 to the 1 half. So now when I go to write my equation, the number of bacteria present at any given time, y, is my initial amount, 600. And then for e to the c, um, for e to the c right here, I'm going to put in 3 to the 1 half. So it's, it's 3 to the t divided by 2 power. And so that's what the equation would look like. Um, if I wanted to know how many present, how many bacteria are present in, in four hours, then I'm just going to put four hours in here for t. So y is 600 times three squared, or 54. It's uh, 5,400 bacteria are present in two hours. Um, you can also look at this. Um, in terms of decay, and we're t decaying exponentially, and it has a half-life of approximately 1,600 years. When you have a half-life problem, it's the same idea. So the amount present at any given time, y, equals the initial amount times e to the ct. But now in this situation, y over y divided by y sub 0 is 1 half. So when I look at half-life problems, I can take, and, and it's really looking at things like, um, in, in particular, um, I'm, I'm taking a look at um, the half-life of this problem, where I have 50 milligrams present, and I want to know after t years how, long, how much is going to be there. So that at y sub 0 is 50. Um, and if I set up 1 half equals e to the uh, half-life of 1,600 years, sorry of 1600 C, then e to the C is 1 half to the 1 over 1600 power. So that again, that's e to the C. So the amount that's present when I, um, I have 50 in the beginning is y equals 50 times 1 half to the T divided by 1600 power. Now, if I want to know um, when will there be remaining 20 milligrams remaining, that's going to be a, a logarithmic equation or an exponential equation, which we've got to use laws to solve. So we get 20 equals 50 times 1 half to the t divided by 1600 power. Divide by 50, so I get 2 fifths equals 1 half to the t divided by 1600 power. 
Now we take the log, or we rewrite this in terms of log. So the log base one half, or we use ln more in this class. So it's really ln of two fifths equals t divided by sixteen hundred times the ln of one half. Divide by the ln of one half. And that gets rid of that, and then multiply by sixteen hundred. And when I put all that in my calculator, what happened I got was 2,115 years. So t equals 2,115 years. And really where that comes from, if you look at that, it does kind of make sense. Because if you only have half-life, if you have a half-life of 1,600 years, it's got to be over 1,600 because 20 is less than half of, of 50. Um, half-life problems, this type of relationship is always going to be true. Uh, when I set up this equation, it's always going to be t over the number of half-life, or however long it takes to be a half-life. Uh, you probably have seen that somewhere else, either in chemistry or physics or something like that. Okay. The final example has to do with Newton's law of cooling, and this is something that uh, has been on the AP exam and then taken off the AP exam and all kinds of different stuff. And um, you can look at Newton's law of cooling. He's looking at y being the temperature at any given time, changing over time where you had this constant C, and it's then Y minus the original room temperature. Um, and we can integrate that, and we can, do some, we can draw some different relationships from it. And, and ultimately, what we have to do is we have to um, find some constant values. So um, in this problem, a couple things that are, are we're starting out with, okay? The temperature of the surrounding medium, or you know, in this case, it's room temperature, it cools from 125 degrees to 100 degrees in um, half an hour. And the room temperature, the air temperature, is 75 degrees. And we want to know what is the temperature in the next half hour. But the I mean, biggest thing is writing the equation. So we start out with this relationship. I'm going to start out with dy over dt equals c times y minus 75 degrees, because that's my room temperature, my surrounding room temperature. I'm going to have to separate my variables. So I separate these variables, put the t up here, so I get dy over y minus 75 equals c dt. I'm going to integrate both sides like I did in my w one example a few ago. And what I get is the ln of y minus 75 equals c t plus a, another constant. Let's call it b. If I unravel my log, I get y minus 75 equals um, e to the c t plus b which is really e to the ct times e to the b. And I need to find the e to the b. Um, I really, what I can do right here is I can find e to the b by using my initial condition. So uh, my initial condition said that at, at time 0, when I took the pie or whatever I was looking at out of the oven, um, it was 125 degrees. So if I go 125 minus 75 equals e to the ct, um, and that was um, um, e to the ct, and, and the t value was 0. That's our initial temperature, times e to the b. What I find in this case is that this part, that just becomes 1. And so I get e to the b equals 50. And that's one of our constants. We need to find a couple of constants. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right back here, and I'm going to write y minus 75 equals 50 times e to the ct. And then I'm going to use my second condition. In my second condition, what I found was that um, um, what I found was that the, the temperature had uh, dropped to 100 degrees in a half hour. So in that particular case, what I got was it's um, 100 minus 75 equals 50 times e to the, it's e to the c divided by 2. And if I move this around, I get what? 1 half equals e to the c divided by 2. And then in this particular case, what I get is e to the c in my problem. I square both sides, so it's got to be 1 fourth. So now the temperature at any given time, if I move that 75 over, is going to be 75 plus 50 times 1 fourth, sorry, 1 fourth to the t power. Um, and then, you know, they ask you, a, a, after another half hour, how, after another half hour, what's the temperature going to be? And after another half hour, it's going to be, um, we're just going to put in t equals 1 because it's going to be sitting out for one hour. So 75 plus 50 times 1 fourth.
to the first power, or 87.5. I'll do another example, another cooling example for you, a Newton law cooling example for you um, in class. Um, in most situations, well, I take that back out, I'm, I'm pretty much in every situation, you can go right here. You don't have to worry about this first part. This first part is always going to be the same. This is going to be our surrounding room temperature right here. And then you got to find that first constant value. You do that by establishing your initial condition. And then um, use that with uh, some more given information for yourself. And you can write the equation for it. So a little bit more on the separation of variables and uh, solving the equations for our constants in our next video. And um, but for now, doing some word problems and exponential growth, exponential decay. Good luck.